Okay, guys, we're going to be playing something called Fasting Senna today. Uh, what is Fasting Senna? Essentially, it is a style of play of AD carry where you do not farm and your support takes all of the last hits. So that when, if you have a support that you know, takes last hits in your game, then Fasting Senna might actually be uh, the style of play for you. Why is it good? It's all about soul generation. So... Uh, you're getting, you're putting gold onto usually a tanky melee support, but it also works with like carry type supports like Seraphine as well. But usually you're putting gold onto a tanky melee support. In this case, it's going to be Leona, but it work, works really well with things like uh, Galio, you know, you know, etc. Anybody, who, anybody who does well with gold, they wouldn't usually get access to gold being in the support role. So the reason it works well with Leona is she's going to get a lot of um sort of early goal which is going to make her much tankier than she would have been traditionally as a support and the reason it's good for senna is because senna really thrives with soul generation so senna is is really really strong uh you know picking up souls and when you're farming as senna you can't really pick up souls consistently because the drop chance is much lower so therefore you need to play this fasting senna style to get as many souls as you physically can now if you're playing if you're playing senna leona i would not recommend especially into a lulu Tri uh, tristan lane i would not recommend that you do this a level two all in um senna's level two is is good but it's not she's not a really an all-in type of uh of, of carry luckily I just about managed to outplay this Tristana, um, but the Lulu ends up taking the kill. So we go two for one overall. But, you know, I wouldn't recommend that you do that because I think um, Senna is not particularly... Uh, Senna's not particularly strong in like a level two all in. Now, what I would say here, if you have a look at the min minion wave, um, killing the Tristana was pretty good because the minion wave is actually just about to crash into our tower, but they didn't push it um, far enough. So we're actually going to be able to freeze this um, this minion wave at our tower, which is actually a really, 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 really big deal. Uh, we, we kind of we've been able to keep the minion wave in a really solid spot, and actually they didn't punish us hard enough. They really should have punished them, punished us much harder in that little, enga little engage. And Lulu should really have pushed the uh, minion wave to tower if she felt like there wasn't a jungler nearby uh, but they do manage to push it to tower in the end but again you know i'm just getting free souls at this point uh, we're in a good spot we're in a good spot and again like i said the, the the benefit of fasting senna is just how quickly you can generate souls but also how you give gold to a melee support that really really gets um a lot of value out of having that gold what i would say is um obviously a lot of people a lot of people um, like to go Senna with a traditional AD carry. It doesn't work as well because essentially double double AD can often make your team comp feel a little bit bad. Um, so in this case, we're having a tank in the support role. Clearly, we've got a tank in the support role. Um, and that's going to give our team comp a better feel overall. Um, that's what I would say about, uh, about fasting Senna. Support Senna with a traditional AD carry is fine. But it does mean that you are... Um, um, so yeah, like when you have a when you have a Senna support with a traditional a traditional AD carry, it generally tends to feel like a bit of a like you, you make your team comp feel a bit bad, especially if you don't have a tank coming from the top lane or a tank coming from the jungle. Um, it can make your team comp feel a little bad, and so therefore fasting Senna in this particular circumstance where you have a, a melee tank support or or just generally a, and the melee engage support or some kind of or you know or some kind of sort of frontliner it makes your uh, team comp feel a bit better and you still have the power of a senna that's getting a lot of souls as your primary ad carry because the souls do make up for a lot of that gold loss that you wouldn't get uh you you know you wouldn't have got if you if you were farming so yeah just to be aware of that um it, it, it's it's more of a team comp thing uh realistically now they go all in for me here but luckily i'm able to flash away uh, and actually you know it had that Leona ult actually landed. We might have been in a relatively good spot. I do manage to get away with uh, more HP than I would have done, which is great. And we're going to use, uh, we're going to just proc in, try and find an engage. A little bit difficult to do, obviously. Um, I'm always constantly looking to try and generate souls, but unfortunately, we're not able to do so. I think they ended up flashing away. So if you ever look at the souls, what, what, I, what I like to say usually is that a good soul value for me is about 20 by the first dragon fight because 20 gets you your first range increase which is a pretty big deal so i like to have about 20 souls by the first dragon fight as you can see on your screen here i've got 23 so we're in a relatively good spot now 
this whenever you play center just look for a good opportunity to get as as many um look for a good opportunity to get as many uh people hit with your ultimate as physically possible that's really what you're looking for when you're playing center just trying to hit as many people with your ultimate as you can um which you know i was able to do now that was a little interesting uh you know with one of the hardest things about using senna one of the hardest things about one second sorry guys you may have heard uh rupert just chilling in the background um oh this is uh, an interesting one but yeah i think really just nice chaining of the cc between my uh between my support and my jungle we managed to chain the cc together we get a really good fight there and i'm at 31 souls off the back of that team fight so 31 souls off the back of that team fight is is, is huge luckily Galio kind of messes that up and I'm able to root him away from the tower and obviously we've just got a little bit a little bit careful that I don't get caught out by an Evelyn or caught out by a Galio first ability but we do manage to get away which is good so uh, Black Cleaver picked up first I really like Black Cleaver as uh, first item in most circumstances there is a bit of debate about whether Black Cleaver or Frozen Mallet is the first the item uh, best first item fallen. for Senna um, in this particular comp difficult to say but i just i just like black cleaver because it just gives me it makes you feel like you deal a little bit more damage but i think if you're trying to kite backwards if you if you're worried about the kiting part of the, the team fights then then clearly um clearly uh, frozen mallet's going to be better if you have a look at the items by the way uh leona's at 4180 gold she hasn't really been able to farm properly um just because obviously we're in a, in a lane matchup that can be a bit difficult to do that that's why things like galio are often a bit better because they can farm more consistently in matchups that are bad for you so for instance like galio can farm a little bit more consistently consistently with his range um which is obviously important however as you can see with me i'm now 32 souls uh, and we're getting quite a lot of souls there is a debate whether you should last hit under tower but the gold is important to you as well so you can afford to sacrifice some soul generation chance to pick up a bit of gold here and there like i'm at 4400 gold i'm actually oop, i'm actually at a lower gold than my uh than my uh well i was at a lower gold than my leona but i'm not at a lower gold than my leona anyway also with um you know with uh Senna, you should be looking across the map for these opportunities to use your ultimate you have a global ultimate and obviously you should want to use it um i was talking a little bit before rupert started chatting to us about the use of this third ability um what was it called uh curse of the black mist when you are in curse of the black mist and enemies are not inside the ring they cannot target you so using curse of the black mist to disengage from fights and using curse of the black mist to keep yourself safe in these uh, circumstances is a pretty big deal um so you using that effectively is a really key part of senna's kit um so curse of the black mist i usually proc it when a team fight starts because it allows my team to kind of jump in and out of that ring and also makes me untargetable until i want to either be targeted or someone tries to engage on me within that ring it's a good way to either run towards a team fight because you gain movement speed or it's a good way in the middle of a team fight to try and disengage and make it difficult for the enemy to pick off individual targets it's a very useful team fight tactic and team fight tool to use which i'd recommend that you try and do um and, and sort of get used to using it if you're uh, trying to play center so it looks like they catch out and we just about managed to root the uh the tristana but she flashes and jumps away because she gets that single kill that is that is a wild a wild push but we managed to get the kill uh, and i also get a soul out of it as well which is nice i'm going for frozen mallet as my uh as my second item by the way you'll notice that um especially because i'm playing ad carry or fasting center i actually don't go for the uh redemption early on here i actually go for my first item um i actually don't even think i go redemption on fasting center because i obviously have the support and he has gone for gargoyle he's gone for gargoyle so that's why he's playing a more tanky leona here um i could obviously go for um i could obviously go for for a redemption if i wanted to but it obviously I don't, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference so you can see here i'm just trying to like absorb as many souls as possible that's that little thing that you see me doing there just landing a basic attack and then looking for something to uh t uh, first ability off so you'll notice that i go for a basic attack and then i use my first ability usually like threading it through minions or threading threading it through uh, an allied champion that's a good way to just go and consistently generate souls versus melee champions um definitely something you should be looking to use it's one of the best tools that you can have on senna for essentially consistently generating souls in the early game and again with your ultimate it's on a relatively low cooldown so just looking for any opportunity to support your teammates in their engage is a good way and you can see that i'm using now using my third ability 
which just gets me into the fight a bit quicker and also provides a little tiny bit of respite for my team. I, and actually, no, we're in a we're in a really strong spot. Like we are kind of popping off now. Uh, and there's also souls pretty much all over the place for me to collect. I'm one of those centers that just likes to collect every soul that I physically see. So uh, that's a that's a big deal. There's, there's another little trick with center that you can do, by the way, that I still am not using properly. This second ability, Last Embrace, um, it says that after a one second delay, the target and other nearby enemies are rooted for 1.9 seconds. But what it doesn't tell you is if it kills an enemy, it also roots the area around them, which includes minions. So if you can use this on a minion and last hit it near an enemy champion, you will also root the enemy champion. So there's a, a little, a little kind of, little, I guess it's a neat little trick that you can use in the laning phase. If you're looking for an engage or looking to kind of lock someone down, use this to last hit an enemy minion near, near an enemy champion and it will automatically root them. Um, so it's just a good little, a good little tip that you can use for, if you don't want to wait for the one second, you want to find the engage immediately, use it to last hit a minion. And if that minion dies, it will root the area around the minion, which gives you the automatic route and immediate route on enemy champions. All right, we've got frozen mallet now. Um, and we are currently at 58 souls, it looks like. Look at the soul. Yeah, there we go. 60 souls. So now I have that big range increase. I've also slowed the uh, slowed the replay down, my mistake. So I've now got that big range increase uh, on center, which is really nice. We're, we're essentially at the range of a tower at this point in time. We're not outranging a tower, but we're basically at the range of a tower. Um, so we, we have a very, very long range on center at this, at this moment in time, which is uh, really nice. 60 souls at 11 minutes into the game is actually a relatively good amount of souls. Um, again, I have been farming a little bit here and there, uh, but for the most part, I've obviously been playing fasting center. If you have a look at my gold, I am the second lowest gold in the game, uh, on my team anyway. Leona, um, Leona actually has less gold than me despite being farming. But as I said, it was a pretty, it was a pretty rough laning phase to farm into. And as you can see here, we're just going a little bit ham in the enemy base. I'm just trying to look for any kind of like last hitting opportunities that I can get. Um, and that's it. You see, you, you just saw it. Okay. I was just talking about it a moment ago. I last hit the minion with last embrace and it automatically rooted um, Lulu. That was not intentional, by the way, but it's a good way of showing you what I mean. We did not have to wait for one second to root Lulu there. She got rooted immediately because the minion got last hit. So we're going for rapid fire cannon now. Um, I like rapid fire cannon because again, Senna gains, Senna gains base critical strike. Um, Senna, Senna gains uh, base critical strike with her souls. So... If I have a look, I'm just going to pause it. Give me a second. I need to go find her passive. Where's Senna's passive? I don't think I can find it here, can I? One second. Um, it's probably the same as the PC one. Give me, give me a second. We're gonna, we're gonna go have a look. Every 20 souls. Oh no, you get slightly more critical strike chance on the on the Wild Rift version, I think. Um but yeah, you, you gain you gain bonus range and critical strike chance every 20 souls. So anything over 100 percent critical strike chance that you gain through soul generation um is is converted into lifesteal um or or, or or physical vamp. So anything over that soul threshold, any that anything over that critical strike threshold is going to get Senna, you know, free physical vamp. Which, when you get a, a rapid fire cannon, you're going to get critical strike built in. I think it's twenty five percent critical strike that you get built in. And obviously, then you you have some being built from the souls. So by the time that you're getting to like eighty or one hundred souls, you'll have a little bit of free physical vamp built into your kit as well. Uh, and in this game, we're at seventy souls, so we're we're, we're doing we're doing pretty well. Uh, and that's the that's the engage that I was talking about using my third ability, just trying to find my way into the middle of the fight and as you can see here we're doing pretty good i've got a kite backwards against the tristana don't want to get involved with that fight and then obviously just got to be a little careful um Evelyn ended up killing me but it is what it is i was a little over aggressive there but you can see like uh, this leona has got significantly more gold than than they would have been able to if they weren't playing um farming leona they've got about two thousand gold advantage on the enemy support uh they built up a dead man's plate and a zeke's as well as a gargoyles so they're dealing a, de a decent amount of damage. They have a load of resistances as well, and they're you know they're pretty tanky. And that's the point of fasting center. You, you can build a you can basically build a tank in the bot lane um, by having a tank support take the farm, and then having Senna just absorb the souls. Uh, and in terms of you know 
the actual um I've got 198 AD, right? So let's compare that to Tristana. Tristana's got 220. Uh, I'm not that far away from Tristana's AD, but I also have massively increased range. I also have massively increased range, and I also have the free critical strike chance. So I've got increased range, so I have a, I, I probably have higher range than Tristana at this point. Um, and I also have, you know, critical strike chance uh, and uh, and also the free AD that I'm getting. I've got 280. So I've got 20 AD less than Tristana, but I also have that massively increased range, as well as having a heal in my kit. And we have a tankier support. You know, we've got we've got a support with more gold on on our side here. So we're just about kind of like again, it's very difficult to touch a center when she's just this 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 far ahead. Um, like you can see the range at which I'm attacking this uh, this um, Renekton from. Uh, the range which I'm attacking this Renekton is absolutely ludicrous. And I finally get 80. Finally get 80 souls towards the end of... Uh, towards the end of this game. Watch, watch the attack range. Look at that attack range, dude. I think we just... Pretty much... I just Even at the end of the game, I like to absorb souls. And yeah, we pretty much end the game at this point. And I'll show you the damage graphs afterwards. Because I'll show you that... Even without the gold, you deal a lot of damage. So we'll show you the damage graphs. Okay, there you go. Uh, 19k damage. Oh, that was a lot less than Tristana, mind you, but Tristana did play pretty well, but I dealt more than Renekton. I dealt more than their Galio. I dealt more than their Evelyn. Um, I dealt more than my uh, my Diana, almost as much as my Vi, and almost as much as my Camille. So it dealt a lot of damage, um, despite having no gold income, realistically, and relying purely on souls. Um, you'll see that my gold was 2,000 less than, than Tristana, uh, but at the end of the day, I had more impact, and I was still generating a huge amount of advantage using the souls that I had. So really, really good um, game of Fasting Center, and would 100% recommend that you give this a go. It's especially good in the duo queue. I was playing with Doom, um, who's a jungler here, but, you know, 5, 2, and 19, like, we had a really, really good game. And I definitely should have got MVP just saying Doom. But yeah, we had a really good game. That's, that's Fasting Center in a nutshell. Really, really great. And I also one of the most fun AD carries to play in the game. Like, who, what is there not to love about winding up a giant railgun and just shooting from a million miles away? That's the best part about Center. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, enjoy Fasting Center. And I'll see you soon.